Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode 54 of Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me. And oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Our very special guest for today, Eddie Penny, who's going to be answering some questions today. Eddie, please say hi, introduce yourself and give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do before I shoot some questions. Hey, Louie, what's going on? Uh, thanks again for having me. I, I love the the format of it, the four questions, rapid fire. That's always that's always good to, to get the real answer and not um, thinking about it. Yeah. So uh, background of me, I did 20 years in the military. I did four years in the United States Marine Corps. Then I switched over to the SEAL teams. I did prob- uh, about six years with our tier one units uh, with the SEALs. Did seven combat deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Africa. And then I got out, started a security company or risk mitigation for high net worth individuals called Contingent Group. And then I started a brand called The Unafraid Brand and have an Unafraid podcast and just wrote a book that just got published about, I think it's five months now, which is called Unafraid. So I love the word Unafraid, obviously. And now I'm here talking to you, buddy. Oh, so cool. And I have to say, I mean, I've always been a real, real big fan of the military and especially the SEALs. And I think everyone uh, everywhere knows that the SEALs are just the best of the best. But I mean, you were in SEAL Team 6 in DevGrew as well. I mean, that's literally like the, it is the, described as the tip of the spear. And it's so true. I mean, you are an amazing person and such an amazing history. And you've gone out of the military and you've had such success and done so much amazing stuff with your business too. And I just can't wait to ask a few questions, man. So if you're ready to go, should we get on to question number one? Shoot. Okay, I sure will. Right then. So, Eddie, for my first question, um, tell me a bit about your backstory then. So how did you originally get into the military? How did you become a Navy SEAL and what motivated you to join and what was it like? Uh, I think the military started for me when I was a child. I always wanted to be outdoors. To, uh, I was playing football, some kind of sports, running around the woods, making spears with a pocket knife and some wood and mm. just making forts. Yeah, Whatever it is, I just I just fell in love with it. Um, had my idols were kind of on the screen, didn't really have media back then at all. So it was kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, all the combat movies. I just was drawn to it. And then I had a friend. I always wanted to be in the military, did not know exactly what it was. And then I was like, I saw a movie called The Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen, and I just fell in love. Uh, that got kind of diverted when I had a buddy that I swam with in high school that went to the Marine Corps. I went to his graduation when I was a junior in high school. So I had one year, one more year of high school. I decided to go the Marine Corps route, uh, did that to four years. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to be or wanted to do. Mm. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I want to do my childhood dream. So I switched over to the SEAL teams and that's where I stayed until I retired at 20 years. That is amazing. So cool. And yeah, you've, it's, it's nice when you follow these kind of I just passions. didn't quit, that's it. <laughs> I know, and I, I was like that too. I was always in the woods as a kid, and we've got woods around where, where we live, and I love making those spears and going out and playing and stuff too, so I really relate to you there. And I've always loved, like I said, the Navy SEALs and all that. And I just want to ask, like, just as, just as a fan and as, as a fanboy, so I don't even know if you can talk about this or not, but in your in, in your time in the SEALs, what was like the most famous mission that you, you went on in your opinion and stuff? Like, was there a mission that you thought was or went really, really famous? And oh, b- by the way, if you can't talk about it, just shut me up. <laughs> there's not I mean, there there's not really a famous one. I guess the there's been a couple that made the news. Mm. And I mean, that was all right, I guess. But, you know, just really all of them, all of them were good. Just ridding bad guys from evil and taking it to the enemy. It was just. It was a dream come true, the sense of pride in the country mm-hmm. and doing something good for the um, earth. I guess you could say the world. It, it was is, just yeah. a good thing. I mean, there all the ops were good for sure, but there mm-hmm. wasn't like a um, like I wasn't on the Bin Laden op. I was not on that op. I had, was on some other high profile ones, but mm-hmm. you know, it really doesn't matter. They they all kind of come down to the same thing: getting the bad guys. Damn right. 
Damn right. And yeah, so, you know, you, you touched on it at the start when you were describing yourself and everything, but I mean, you've had such success in in the military and that's obviously transferred over to the civilian life as well and in, into business. And I'm just interested about that. So, you know, for my second question, then after your time in the military, you've obviously gone on to be very, very successful and you've applied a lot of the military ideologies to your brand and the branding of it. So my question is, what was it like for you transitioning out of the military and how did your journey go on to write your book and create those brands? It was hard. The transition piece, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it was an easy, uh, it was a cakewalk from getting out of the military where everything's kind of provided for you. I know that I have a paycheck coming on the 1st of the 15th of the month. Every month mm -hmm. I have all my doctor bills taken care of, my dental taken care of, everything is just taken care of. And that's scary when you get out knowing that that's about to be pulled out from underneath you. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a hard transition. There was a lot of alcohol use. There was a lot of pill popping to numb my feelings and to sleep. Uh, it was a scary time because it was the unknown. I did not know what was going on. Um, 20 years of pretty much being a savage overseas kind of, you know, wreaking havoc. And then you have to go take care of, um, you know, this thing they call civilian life. And at that time, when I was in that transition, the last couple of years, is I got custody of three children, which is another piece of the of the puzzle that kind of add to it. So I was I was definitely overwhelmed uh and my my saving grace was definitely christ uh was finding my faith that that definitely saved i believe saved my life along with my children uh but when it came to like you said that i implemented the same stuff in the military is i never i had no problem risking it in the military because i i like it just had confidence in myself and i kind of apply that same thing i didn't have like a, a business model or business plan it's just like i'm just gonna go do it that's what mm. I've always done. That seems to work for me is go do it. Is there failures along the way? Absolutely. Uh, and I still fail all the time, but I'm not afraid to fail. Again, mm. I learned from my failures and I'm like, okay, let's not do that again. Let's go do this instead. And that's just kind of where, how I got to where I am. And I'm, there's so much more I have to do. So much more I have to do. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a journey and a process and that kind of warrior mentality. Absolutely. It's always process. going. Isn't it? Exactly. Hell yeah. And it's it's always a thing of growth. And um, I'm interested, though. So talk to me about the brand name. I mean, I've look, after looking at all of your stuff and you love this word unafraid and it's, it's part of your brand and your book and you talk about it so much. Um, I'm just interested. Is there kind of like, you know, good brands and good, good names? They always have like a little story behind them. I'm just wondering, what does unafraid mean to you? And what is there a story behind it? Why you chose that that phrase? There's just something about the word that I love. Mm. And I think it goes to, we see it a lot. A lot of individuals are scared. Um, there was time in my life where I was scared and, and, and it's okay to be fearful and be scared about something, but it's not okay to stay in that same position at all times that stop you from doing to accomplishing a goal or reaching your potential, which is, there is no limit, in my opinion. Hmm. Um, I, I noticed that people, it's just, it's all encompassing. People are afraid to put in a job application, a job application because they're afraid of getting rejected. They're afraid to go talk to this girl or this dude for to go on a date because they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid to try a diet because they're afraid of failure. They're afraid to do, they're afraid to walk into a gym because they're afraid people might look at them in a weird way. Like mm. there's, they're afraid to tell you your political affiliation. They're afraid to start that business. They're afraid to try out for the spec ops of a military branch. They're, they're afraid. There's a lot of fear, a lot of fear, and there's no time for it. There's, you, you have one life, like just get after it, just go. If, are you going to fail? Absolutely. Are you going to hit a wall? Absolutely. But you're going to learn. And it's better than always wondering, what if? What if I did this? I should have done this. Like, the should have, could have. Like, mm -mm, no thanks. Like, that's just not my, I, just not how I live. And the word unafraid came up. I can't exactly, like, I got the tattoo on my arm, which is actually, sorry, this one. <laughs> I got that first. And then I heard a song uh, after I got that tattoo when I was kind of, you know, diving into the unafraid thing. I was like, there's more to this. Like maybe I should do a t-shirt. And I heard a song by Skillet called Lions and it says, unafraid. I'm like, that's it. That's my brand. And I already had that time. Like just all, I'm like, why didn't I think of this before? 
and I kept seeing the word, it kept popping up, and I'm like, that's it. This like, and it started out as a t-shirt. And then it just started like, wait a second, there's way more to this. There it, it means something. Someone sees the word unafraid. It, it's like, yeah, unafraid. I, I my daughter comes down the stairs wearing an unafraid t-shirt. I'm like, that's right. It's a reminder and accountability, like, okay, I'm gonna be unafraid today. And I need those reminders daily because I'm attacked just like the next guy of negative thinking, worry, all that stuff. But uh Yes, it means something. It's not just a t-shirt. It's a let's go, like, let's go. Mm, I love that story. That's really cool. And I'm interested then. So this this is kind of sparking little, little ideas in my head. And I just want to think about what actually is fear? What, what is your take on that? And how do you start to reduce that? I mean, you look at society and stuff and the common belief and the common sort of advice I see from a lot of kind of big influencers and people is you, you should just stop caring what people think about, you know, just don't give a fuck and, and, you know, have no fear. But I feel like a lot of people kind of almost try to convince themselves that they don't rather than actually not having that fact. So I'm interested to know what you think about it and how do you actually start to get rid of that fear and how do you become unafraid? Like, what's the start of it? There, There is no way around it. You are going to be fearful about something. It, it, and again, it's that moment you have that choice. Am I going to push through the fear or am I going to let it consume me? I believe we all have that choice. Now, you, you mentioned something. We are afraid what other people think. And you have to ask yourself this question. Why? Mm. Are you ever going to meet these people? Do they have your cell phone? Are they going to call you? I mean, it's usually people on media that you've never seen, but for some reason, a little comment for someone that knows nothing about you gives people fear. They're afraid to post something cool. They're, they're, they're whatever it might be, or to talk about a certain subject. They're afraid. Mm. Like to be honest, there's no one's. Uh, we can evaluate people's opinions. I think other opinions are great or different perspective or wonderful, but to give you a perspective on what you believe or your opinion. Just because you and you're you won't do that because you're afraid of what someone you might come the confrontation. Nah, that's that's a weak mindset. Like it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what people tell you. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Doesn't mean that I won't take people's advice or anything. I'm not saying that at all, but it shouldn't let it deter like you from you stopping. If I did that, I would have never been a SEAL. There is people that said, Oh, a lot of people quit. Like, mm, I don't know about that. You sure about that? Like mm. Like that's their opinion. Okay, cool. I took that opinion of negativity and I made it positive. That was my fuel. Like, and I would say, I'll show you. I'll show you. Not that I needed to show you, but I turned it into my fuel. Mm, that's really good. I love that. I love how you answer these things as well. You've got you've got such a, a sharp kind of way of and quick way of doing it, and it it really really resonates and, and makes sense. And I feel like a lot of a lot of the kind of fear of what people think about you and stuff it, it's it comes down to comparing yourself to them and, and thinking that you're even less or more than them and I have a feeling honestly that you you do reduce your fear levels when you become the best version of yourself like if you're self-conscious about something you probably are thinking that oh this person thinks I'm I'm fat or this person thinks this of me or, or whatever but when you actually are in that great shape and you're in a great place and you start comparing yourself to you rather than yourself to other people. That's when magic things start to happen in, in life and in business and everything. Would you agree with that? Definitely. And there's, there's a huge thing to always remember to, we'll say that someone is fat or is skinny is whatever it is, whatever it may be is we know us. No one knows me like I know me. I know what I'm capable of. I know what's going on in my life. It could be turmoil. It could be success. It could be both. Other people have that same situation that we don't know about. We have got mm. to remember that. So even if they're 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 overweight, we'll just use that because you, you mentioned it. Sure. Recognize that and go take that step to fix yourself. There are things that I'm working on all the time. I never stop. That self-improvement piece never, never stops. I might have the physical piece down, but I still have weak areas that I have got to work on for sure. Patience. Uh, sometimes I get too angry when I shouldn't be. Like there are there are certain times I need to really work on that where other people's might have not have anything to do with that, but they have to work on, I need to go work out or I should probably not eat this. Like we all have success and turmoils in our lives. You know you, they know them. So judging others and trying to come at them 
Um, but you're not going to stop, but you can do you, you can work on you. Cause that's all you can do. You can, you can help your choices. No one else's. Mm, absolutely. And I, I like what you touched on there as well, because I feel like that really, really makes sense. And you start to reduce that fear when you know yourself better. And when you know yourself better, that's when you can start to become accountable. And when you're accountable and you're aware of what your strengths and weaknesses are, that's when you can start to put together the action plan or if you have <laughs> for, for terminology uh, for you, the target package or something for for fixing these things and becoming the best version of yourself. And and that goes f- for everything Absolutely. in fitness and and business and then when you when you have that when you recognize these things that you could be doing better or wrong you remove that that wall of fog that you that you that we call denial that's when you can start to to make the the action plan and then you can start to set the goals and then you can put a time stamp on it and then you can just get it get to work it's, it's absolutely vital absolutely. so isn't that true though absolutely and then you get to help other people because what your strength is, maybe their weakness, and what their strength is could be your weakness. And we're just helping each other out. And it and it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing to help someone else out. Because mm. no one's no one is perfect. Everyone has struggles. Some might not want to admit it by a thing called pride, but mm. uh putting the pride aside and re- recognizing like, hey, I need to work on this, that's a big step. And I applaud everyone that does that. Absolutely. So true. And that that goes to to business as well, and and I'm sure you know this because you've you've run these successful businesses, and you, you obviously still do. Um, it's like when you have that accountability and you're aware of the things that you're doing and the procrastination and stuff, then you can start to build these targets and goals and time frames, and and you can set these things. So I mean, this ties really nicely into my third question, actually, which I'll, I'll ask now. Um, so what few things did you take from your experience, training and career in the military and the SEALs that you feel have applied into the business world and have had the most profound effect on your degree of success? Ideally, also some things that the listeners who are maybe civilians can also take from there and, and apply to their stuff, too. One thing that came to mind as soon as you asked that question was and that I tell anyone that uh comes on to the company or whatever Mm. is no matter what it is we will make it happen because if that's one big thing i took from opping is when you're out there in bad guy land you have to make it happen or else you die like that's what it comes down to so i take that into my business that's my mindset is we'll make it happen no matter what it is we'll make it happen that's it Mm. like there's the, the conversation's over if they say can we do this yes it's mm. always a yes. I've never said no to anything. Now, <laughs> has there been times I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but once I get with my team, we kind of dive into it. We're like, yeah, we can make this happen. We can make this happen because everything's attainable. Everything is attainable. And if you have that mindset that everything is attainable, nothing's going to come into that. Mm. There I is a that. no. There's no no. That's We're brilliant. making it happen. But isn't that it there? I mean, I can tell how much that ties into into the seals as well because if you think about it you've you've got these such important missions and the the things that you're doing out there and and the people that you're you're dealing with and, and having to to go out after there's so much weight on those shoulders isn't there and and it's it's a case of not taking not not taking no for an answer all the time and and you can't because the effects of of mission failure is is so destructive to so many people so i can totally see how that that completely ties into it you know you can't you can't take no for an answer it's just that simple isn't it yeah and you can't take no for an answer when you're going through training or else you quit Mm. or you don't make it so there there's no option if they say you have to do this to get to where to get here then you have to do it there's no reason to debate with yourself or say "Mm, i don't know it's either you do it or you don't and if you don't you go away if you do you move forward same thing with business Absolutely. Same thing in life. Absolutely. With everything. I think I think that's that goes into relationships as well, goes into everything. social life. Literally, it's just it's like the golden everything. rule for life, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. I mean we just figured out all the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> we just did. I love it. Talk for podcast episode 54. We have now 
fix the whole world <laughs> with this one solution. Uh, how beautiful that would be. That's I know. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's it's uh, it's not that simple right now. But I mean, no. it's, it, but isn't that tr- isn't that true though? Like, imagine this. I, I know that I know we're joking about it, but if everyone started to obviously good people, if if people started to actually do that, start to become accountable to these things, and and not take no for an answer and really go after their dreams and their passion and stuff. Wouldn't the world be just such a better place right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it all comes down to your mindset. It comes to the human brain is phenomenal. Mm. We don't think it is. And we do things that hinder it by what we eat, how much sleep we get, how, how much exercise we have, how much fun we have. How's our family life, our recreational life. All these things kind of tie who we're hanging out with, our accountability that you mentioned. What are you scrolling on your phone? What kind of podcast you listen? What kind of music you listen to? All these things are little elements that make up your mindset. You make all those elements good, you're going to have a good mindset. You start throwing in toxic and negative things, your mindset is going to slowly turn negative, plain and simple. It is. And I think that's that's touching onto a, a very, very big and and deep subject there as well because i've been thinking about this recently like people have always said in my life they've always said you should trust yourself you should learn to trust yourself no fuck off i can't trust myself how can i trust myself when i've got these tendencies and i get these cravings and and all this this culture that's been built up with with fast foods and 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 alcohol and, and all these kind of things they can just creep into into your into your head. No, I can't trust myself. I need to be on top of it. I need to be yeah. accountable. I need to and, make the right decisions. You can't trust other people because everyone's doing it. Like everyone's doing it. Yeah, then I don't want to do it <laughs> because <laughs> society. I hate to say it, we got it all wrong. Like we have it all wrong. I know, it's especially here in America. That's all. I mean, I definitely know that. But you, oh, it's here as well. It's everywhere, and I mean, people really have to start self-improving because we've got this 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 culture now and and it's become so easy to to get trapped in into these into these addictions and i don't just mean when people think of addiction that word they they kind of collaborate it with alcohol and drugs but i mean addiction is just where you're getting that dopamine hit from really isn't it and that that could be social media or 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 the, the Netflix bin session, or it could be, it or a could cheeseburger. be a cheeseburger. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to. I, I do have to admit, I am heavily addicted to that one. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I, lo- <laughs> I love, I, I love a burger. <laughs> oh yeah, they're the best. Yeah, we've okay. all got our thing. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gotta ask you now. Then, so construct for me right now your ideal burger. <laughs> Oh, dude, where do we begin on this one? And it really depends on what I'm feeling. So a, a good bun, like a potato <laughs> bun or something like that, yeah. uh, or brioche, I think it's called. Yeah. Nice fat patty, medium rare, a couple slices of American cheese or, or, or cheddar, lettuce, tomato, grilled onions with a little bit of mustard and ketchup that would, and some pickles. That would be mine. I was, I was about to ask, is it? are you for the gherkin or are you against the gherkin but you're for it and that's good i totally agree they're they're, they're a great addition to it what about bacon bacon is does that belong in a burger do you think bacon's got to be on there sometimes big on sometimes yeah 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 i love it <laughs> not usually i'm like i don't need that extra fat i'm like i'm eating this huge burger what does it matter <laughs> <laughs> so true so true i love i love that we're talking about like we're talking about culture problems and the seals and stuff and now we're just talking about burgers brilliant i love it um that was your best question reconstructive (laughs) or your best burger that was perfect (laughs) i love it what is your favorite food then talk me through this then navy seal favorite food honestly probably i don't know if this makes me hypocritical but i've really been like craving my chocolate chip pancakes after a workout that's been my go-to lately (laughs) Have but you, if it's you... like a food, sushi yeah. for sure. Ooh, nice one. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'd ha- I'd have to say probably is a really good burger, but it can't it can't be the the oven thing. It has to be done on the barbecue. That makes such a big difference. And you're you're te- mm-hmm. you're, you're in Texas, Absolutely. aren't you? You you know that to be true. <laughs> of course, Texas. Like, oh yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. You get looked at wrong. 
<laughs> and <laughs> I care about that opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. Oh, I love it. Anyway, <laughs> let's get let's get back on track, man. Um, right. So for my fourth question now, then Eddie, and um, this is going to be a good one. Interesting question I've got here. Looking forward to asking it. So obviously we've spoken a lot about unafraid and the whole brand and everything. So you know, you, like I said, you speak about that a hell of a lot. That's your brand. That's your thing. So my question is for my fourth and final question is for someone listening right now who is scared of things happening in their life, the uncertainty of the world, maybe going through bad times and it's just full of fear, afraid of the unknown. As a seal who's been to the places you have you have been and the things you've seen, how do you start to become unafraid? What is the way to flip it on itself? And what would you tell them to do to start changing that mindset? What's the plan here? I would take an assessment of yourself. I would take an assessment of yourself and I would I would tell you to get out a list and write down or get out a piece of paper and a pen and write down toxic elements in your life and write down what comes to your mind. And for a lot of people, that could be a friendship, a relationship. It could be the person you're living with under your roof. Mm. It could be a certain place like a bar. It could be food. Um, it, it could be watching or listening to certain podcasts that don't bring the best thing that make your mind want to do or lead you down a, a, a dark path. I would write those down and I would like, all right, go now go attack them. I would say, which one do you think is the most detrimental? Go for that one and take the first step and the first step only, because that is all you are responsible for is take this out and then just start taking out your targets. And with that, making sure you're not starting new bad habits, um, and and make sure you're doing the right thing and not like diverting this but that that's what i would do and once you start taking that toxic stuff you'll see your life start changing and what's cool is people will be like you're changing why are you so changing over the last probably couple years when i've really embraced this unafraid concept or mindset development i should say is people will be like man you're you're different you're you're really different like why are you different i just started working on myself like i stopped drinking i start getting my um I guess you could say my dopamine drops from things on the internet, certain things. I'm like, dude, I, this is not good. I shouldn't be doing this. I have to stop this. I need to put my family in first, not, not this. Uh, and it's been a process. It, like you, we, you said, you actually said the word process and you, you're hundred percent right. It's not this light switch. Like it's just done. Mm. It is a lifelong process. It's not easy. I fall sometimes I need to get back up, but the, the can, you, you just need to move forward. And that pace depends on what you're dealing with. And it, I'm not going to lie and act like, you know, life is peachy and Eddie's got it all figured out, man. I've got struggles too, just like the next guy. They're, I'm no different. Uh, they just might have a different flavor, as I like to say, but is constantly refining and reforging and making a better you. And for a lot of people, it's very easy if they write it down, like, man, I never thought about that. I I, I don't need that. Or every time I hang around, you know, Johnny, down uh, at my work, bad things happen. I stay out too late. I get trashed. I go home. I argue with my wife and I feel like crap the next day. Mm -hmm. That would be a toxic situation. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. It's not. I, I actually think that that journaling is one of those things that people really should do a lot more of because that, that ties in with what you 100%. said. And it, it all, 100%. you know, it comes down to self-awareness doesn't it at the end of the day that's that's what it's about self-awareness knowing yourself like we said when you know yourself better that's when you can start to reduce that fear and you can start to get yourself into the body and the mind of of someone who is elite like like you the navy seals the seal team six of mindset the tip of the spear the best of the best of who you can be and then <laughs> I, I know it's, it's a funny thing there's a lot of attributes and traits about ourselves that we can't we can't change it's just like facial features and, and stuff we're we, we all designed a certain a certain way but you sure as hell can take control of of a few factors of it and and those few factors have done have done them. well isn't that true though it's like I mean, if, if you think about it you think you think of the bodies of these these bodybuilders and and these people, I was talking about it with Rudy Reyes, actually, and, and stuff. And when, when you look back to the sculptures and statues and stuff in 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 Rome and uh, all these places, it's just this kind of body is just the hero. It's seen as godlike in a way. And, and you can 
achieved that and it, it's what shows your your character and self-control and and your ability to take charge of your of your life doesn't it when you have that kind of a body it's it's the kind of it's funny how it how it sort of works like all the unhealthy things and all the bad habits and dopamine hits and stuff that we were talking about that's what puts the belly on almost isn't it it's a reflection yeah. and, and it's here's a, reflection a question here's a question to ask yourself somebody that's in top physical shape how's their family life how are their mm. extracurriculars out of the gym are they doing the right thing are they feeding their mind with good stuff because there's been times where I was like at the tip of the spear running and gunning on top of the world on my field, but my family was in nothing but disarray. Mm. So there's always a trade-off and then you got to find that way to balance everything and be encompassing, like doing the right thing. And mm. that's hard for some. And I was very guilty of that. And I still struggle sometimes. Sometimes work takes priority of my family and my wife's got to remind me and kind of reel me back in because I'm human I want to go, 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 go. That's just kind of how I'm programmed. Uh, but I, I I have to like check myself. Like I will, I will not sit here and act like I've got to figure it out. I am constantly working. I constantly mess up and I constantly do great things. But when I look back, I can see a lot of progress. And that's what I really care about. I care about the long game because I know it's not just that, you know what? I'm gonna do everything right. It just doesn't work that way. That That's fake. Mm. So it's, I think this ties in with what you said as well earlier. It's like, but you're a SEAL, so you know the importance of, of teamwork. And what you said earlier about how you should start to remove these bad people, these toxic things in it, and become self-aware of what's actually not making you happy and the people that are dragging you back down into, into bad places. But it really is about teamwork, isn't it? And you, you mentioned there about your family and your wife kind of brings you back, brings you back down and stuff and, and makes is, is that balancing factor in a way but that could be your friends as well and I like how it ties in because you, if you, when you start to improve the people who surround you and stuff even in the even in the seals you know you've got all these people with the special special skills and everything and it makes a team and, and the brotherhood and everything and that and that just helps you so much but no Eddie man you're, you're killing it at the moment it's so good to see uh, like like we said about the process though what's next for you man so what's what you got planned what's coming up for you uh, we are going to continue the Unafraid podcast. Um, speaking engagements is a big one I'm going to start pushing for. I feel like I just need to be in front of people and equip them from my failures is really mm. what it kind of comes down and what I've done to kind of pull myself out of what I would call a dark place. No matter, I call it the facade. Looks like everything's great, but I was not in the best place. Mm. Uh, but I have experience of being there and getting out of it and still working through a lot of that stuff. And then we're starting our second book, actually our second and third book. So we got more books coming. So we're, we're excited. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to hope, hoping to be in the lineup for a signed copy of that, Eddie. Um, lo last thing I want to ask you uh, as well, just um, for the fan and me. So is there any kind of a little Navy SEAL quote or slang term or just some expression or something I can nab off you and, and, and take away? <laughs> The only thing that's coming up is we use own the room, own the room. You walk in so and we use it as we come in and we're whatever mm. we got going on is we're owning that room. We're taking out any bad guys, but that crosses over to life. Any room you walk in and there's tons of different rooms. If it's a boardroom, if it's the gym, if it's a restaurant, own the situation at all times. That's really what it comes down to is own the situation. That doesn't mean you got to be a punk or a jerk. You're just there. You're ready to go. You're not complacent. You're an asset, not a liability, and you're ready to rock. Own the room. That's badass. I love it. Well, <laughs> Eddie, that has been our four questions. And that's going to be a t-shirt, then... by the way. Is it? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be, oh, yeah, be one of them. Oh, yeah, it is. I can't wait to see it, dude. Uh, but yeah, that has, like I said, that has been our four questions done for today. And before we wrap this one up, it is time for what I like to call, and everyone knows, as the shameless plug. So, Eddie, feel free to take a minute and promote anything that you're working on, you want people to take a look at, or just something you believe in, and make sure to let us know where we can find you and, and your website and stuff. I'll I would just say if you want to follow what's going on, uh, or I call it Team Unafraid, is all the links are in all my bios for the Facebook fan page, the Instagram you can go in there and there's a team Patreon and I get pretty 
in depth on there. And, and I would, I would caution you though, do not join that unless you want to get better uh, because it's a paid subscription and we want people there that are actually committed to doing better. So we make it paid because we're getting rid of the weeds. We don't want the weeds, we want the flowers that are going to grow and blossom yeah. and destroy any strongholds that they have in their life. Uh, but yeah, Unafraid Podcast on YouTube, which is under Eddie Penny on, on YouTube. Uh, but pretty much everything's under all any media. There's I got the link tree that has all the all the different links of what, what's going on. Perfect. Well, Eddie. Thank you so much for joining me today for the Talk 4 podcast. This has been an absolute pleasure and a true honor to have you on, man. All right, Louis, thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Yeah, guys, um, as usual, I have all the links for Eddie's stuff in the description as well. Make sure to give him a follow, grab a book, grab a T-shirt, grab a very, very cool T-shirt as well. But anyway, guys, thank you for listening. This has been episode 54. And if you'd like to listen into our past episodes, go and have a look at our channel. And if you'd like to listen in for our future ones, make sure to hit that subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment. Signing off for now.